All right, watching the world burn, watching the world burn, May 8th, 2023. We're going to start with the banking crisis. Well, we're going to see a lot more fireworks here in the coming weeks, coming months. Uh, as the uh, Federal Reserve and the uh, J.P. Morgan roll up all of the regional banks into the central banks uh, so that we can have a central bank digital currency. Now, if you don't know what's going on, be sure and watch some of the other channels. The problem for us is going to be is that our currency is not based on gold. China just announced, and I want to say today, uh, that their, their currency... Uh, I can't remember exactly. It's not that their currency is exactly based on gold. It's that you can redeem digitally your, your, your money for gold. I don't know. You'd have to watch some videos on that. I was trying to understand the difference if it's, you know, but it's based on gold, whatever you say. So that, and of course, Jamie Dimon right now, <laughs> he's over in China. Wonder what's going on there, huh? So yeah, we are screwed here in the United States for a means of exchange because uh, that means they're going to monitor everything you do, every little purchase you make, and of course you will have your environmental ESG score. So uh, you know if you uh, if you want to buy that gas guzzling truck, oh no, 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 you you can't buy that because uh, you know that's uh, that's not approved uh, stuff that you can buy. If you if you're not going to eat insects, then uh, you can't transact on that. No, you're going to be limited in how much meat you can buy, if any at all, and of course uh, your vegetables. But let's get back to the banking crisis. So, you know, I wonder where is Sam Bankman free? Huh? I I, I don't I haven't heard much about him. And to me, that's where the banking crisis began. Uh, because there was all kinds of, well, of course, he was the one who precipitated the Silicon Valley bank failure because they had invested a lot of money in uh, his uh, crypto scam. Uh, but I guess Sam bankman fried he must be down in uh, the Bahamas sipping pina coladas because uh, he was a Democrat, uh, huge Democrat donor, and the Democrats take care of their own. I tell you what, if you want to be an evil son of a gun, become a Democrat because then your party's going to take care of you no matter what. You could go out and shoot 15 people and I guarantee you, you wouldn't go to jail. But let's, uh, let's keep on going. So we got the, uh, the banking crisis. Started with Silicon Valley Bank and, well, it started a lot before that. But uh, then you had Signature Bank. Then you had First Republican Bank, Frank. And, of course, there was Credit, Su Credit Susie was mixed in there. Uh, a lot of people say, well, it didn't fail. UBS bought them out. No, it's, it failed. Uh, and, and that's still a precarious situation because who knows what's going to happen to UBS. But, of course, the government backed the whole thing by printing money. <clears throat> so uh, uh, let's see. Then you, we've got some other banks on the horizon. Uh, some people are speculating that uh, the TD Bank, uh, uh, Toronto Dominion Bank out of Canada, there's a lot of shorts on that. Um, and they're saying that's in a precarious position. And then Bank of America, there's a lot of people betting against that. So we'll see what happens. Those, that, that would be uh, two, two big banks to go down. But for regional banks, we're looking at Western Alliance and PacWest and possibly First. Or, well, right, they're all three going to go eventually. I just We don't know what order and how soon. It looks like PacWest is going down first because uh, there was a huge, I mean, a huge stock sell-off there. Which, uh, so I always like to give advice, and I, I found this little, I don't even know where I found this, uh, but it was kind of like, you know, how do you know when your bank's going to fail and when to get your money out? And I thought the greatest tip ever was watch the stock price, <laughs> you know, because, because I mean, PacWest went down huge, and I, they, you know, they, from what I understand, they didn't, they didn't close their doors so people could still get their money out. Uh, then it went down again, and then it went down even more. So it's just about down to almost a penny. I don't even know where it's at right now. I mean, it, it just kept plunging. But, I mean, that would have been a huge indicator. <laughs> Get your money out now. Of course, you really should be uh, uh, getting it out. And, of course, annual reports, who the hell reads those? And then, of course, uh, who the hell watches the news? They said, oh, you watch the news. So that's the three things you could do. Now, um, I keep my money spread around between various banks. The, uh, the other thing that was interesting was when the uh, Federal Reserve uh, told uh, the shareholders 
to, to F off. They said, oh, no, we're not bailing out the shareholders, only the depositors. So what does that mean? That means that shareholders of all these regional banks, I, I'd be sell, 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 baby, just like Jim Cramer likes to say. I hope you're still listening to him. I think you've lost a lot of money if you are. Uh, he seems to be in the pocket of the globalist to try to steer people to all the wrong things from what I can see. Yeah, he used to actually watch the guy. I, uh, the other thing, you know, you got the commercial real estate crisis that's uh, looming on the horizon. That's going to be huge. That, if, that'll help to take down the banks and consolidate them into the three, three or two or one big bank uh, so that we'll have a, a central bank digital currency. Uh, of course, you know, this, this whole thing is engineered by the globalists and the Fed. This isn't happening by accident. The other thing is, uh, if you live in a Democrat state and you got a pension, I, you know, I, I just want to say kiss it goodbye because <laughs> you're with BlackRock, baby. And uh, that ESG score means more to them than making you money. And uh, so they got your pension invested and in probably in these regions. That's what they do is they use these pensions to bail out all of the, the Democrat uh, things that, that don't make money, but uh, support their, their environmental causes or, uh, or their political agenda. It's not about making money. So uh, thank God I live in Florida where we got uh, our pension or at least our state pension because, you know, the state employees serve me. You know, I'm a taxpayer here in Florida and I want them to keep their pension. So I, I do appreciate DeSantis doing that. Uh, and of course, you know, J.P. Morgan, they got a sweetheart deal. All profit and no risk. Uh, they socialized the risk. Uh, that's you and me, the taxpayer. We paid Paid for that uh, regional bank going down. <clears throat> Housing is flatlined. If you didn't know that, uh, I'd say it's prop. Well, I don't know. It's I still see a lot of construction, at least around me. And I was watching um, dang, Jeremiah Babe, and uh, he was showing that there's still construction going on out there. Who the hell would build in California? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. And these are like six hundred thousand dollar homes. I was like, oh my god, this is insane. And of course, another thing that you can do is uh, I try to move a little money around each day. So I sprinkle a little bit like I, I just bought a uh, $1,000 CD at uh, Navy Federal Credit Union. Um, and so the way I did that, though, is I just moved 200 a day, you know, because it makes me feel better. Right. So what do you need to do to make yourself feel better as we watch the world burn? Well, get a garden. All right. Let's talk backyard garden again. So you can see from the leaves, things are still chewing on them. And I've been spraying that soapy water on here. I might be helping, but it's not stopping. So I'm on my way to Rural King to find out what the scoop is. I don't want to use pesticides per se, but they might have something better. Now, let's talk home gardening. These are five, four Hawaiian plants that I bought online. They're not dead yet, and I'm hoping they're going to survive. I don't know what's wrong here. I, I put them in soil. They've got all the nutrition they need. They've had plenty of water. And even my basil plant. Look at the, the bugs have been chewing on that. Look at the bottom of this uh, cherry tomato plant. So we got to get to the, the, the crux of this mystery. I wanted to talk briefly about these pine bark nuggets. Because um, I was watching a video on these uh, two blueberry bushes that I have right here. And uh, I mulched it with, uh, this is uh, cypress. And uh, that's a no-no. <laughs> These things, they need uh, alkaline, uh, you need to get your pH tester. I have one. But, you know, and right now everything's okay underneath the ground, but I, you don't want to be using this mulch. And so that's why I got to move all that mulch out because I didn't know what I was doing and put this pine bark nuggets uh, as, as mulching this from here over in my garden. Now, I wanted to show you this, uh, well, I don't want to say catastrophe. It was just that, you know, I knew this is where the pineapple plants are going to go. Because you can see there's kind of a tree right here, but the sun comes in from this direction. So they're going to get adequate sunlight. And if they don't make it, I'm going to use this area for something else. So what was important, look at this soil. Oh, my God. You know, I dug that entire thing out. That amounted to six of those tubs uh plus uh, about i don't know six of these buckets plus that pile of dirt down there just for that one hole right there i can't imagine these huge raised beds that i see 
<laughs> excuse me, on the YouTube videos. Um, we're going to get into this. Uh, I'm going to have to build a trellis for this. This is a blackberry bush. I didn't realize there's like a hundred varieties of these damn things. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea what I bought because I just thought blackberries, right? I mean, I thought maybe the one or two or three, uh, and that this is not a vine, thank God. But it's gonna, I'm going to have to stake that up just like I did with this ridiculous thing that I did for this tomato plant. I had no idea that, look at the thing. Let's see, I'm five foot four. That's at least six feet tall right now. I mean, my God. But anyway, I, I've, I've got to build a trellis. So now I know I got to go up at least <laughs> at least six feet for a trellis uh, in case I ever buy a plant like that. I mean, I, you know, I'm glad. I'd look at it, it's got tomatoes on it. So I'm going to get a harvest here within the next month. So that's wonderful. Uh, you know, everything's doing good. This is the um, um, zucchini right here. Uh, this is the uh, collard greens. I got to do more homework on those. I tell you what, the rain barrel is working out. Now, what I wish I had thought about, and there's, uh, if you watch YouTube videos, I would have chained this rain barrel to another rain barrel. Uh, maybe, well, probably, well, I can't know because I wouldn't want to take up this because someday I'm, I'm going to plant something in here. I don't know what, but, uh, I, I, you know, good Lord, it, just getting this far. <laughs> Man, good. I, you know, digging that out took me about, I'd say, four or five days just because there was roots in there and rocks and metal and, uh, and not a single worm. Nope, not a single. That soil does not support worms, which I ought to tell you. And that's why everything, you know, it's pretty funny. My good f funny story for you. My ex-wife, she would always can plant stuff in there <laughs> and it would all die. <laughs> It'd die every single time. I said, man, you just like the death of everything. Well, it's because of that soil. Not, that's dead soil, man. Nothing's gonna grow in there. And yeah, you could you can dig out around an area around the plant, but then once the roots expand out, so that's why I brought it up as close as I could. Now I dug all this out. Now you wouldn't know it. I don't think I went down deep enough because I was only getting black soil down about six inches. I don't know. I don't remember when I planted these. Maybe I was being lazy. Yeah, that's me uh, working on the garden, dumber than a bag of stones. <laughs> I tell you, I made every mistake in the book. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, the second thing that I want to do is, uh, you know, you got to get out and get your head on straight. The way that I do that is I go hiking. Check it out. So today I'm here at the Flat Island Preserve. So this 2,300 acre for conservation area known as Flat Island Preserve is located in southwest Leesburg just north of Lake Denham. This preserve protects two beautiful woodland air islands, uh, Flat Island and Magnolia Island, and the vital wetlands that surround them. Right, we're back on the red trail. Check this out. Does this look cool or what? Woo! Kind of scary. <laughs> really. You really feel like you're back in here, don't you? Let's uh Wow. Just wanna see what comes up as I get through the roots here. I always love these boardwalks, you know. Can you imagine the amount of work that goes into making one of these? I just uh, they are really cool. And I imagine, you know, when it rains it's gonna be quite swampy through here and the ground underneath here is very, very soft, I can tell you that just from having hiked through some of this. <laughs> well, not quite that, but I mean back there when it was a bit drier. So, but isn't this cool? Let's uh, let's get a panoramic here. Uh, we're just at the turn. Look at this. Definitely a trail that if you live in Central Florida, this is uh, this is worth uh, it's worth a moment of your time, people. Holy moly, I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, that was me on the trail. Uh, I tell you what, um, I, I I just, that's the thing for me is what, uh, I had PTSD after the war really bad. And uh, one doctor told me, he says, do you like walking? I said, well, yeah, I like walking. And, uh, you know, but then, it, you know, I, at first I was walking, you know, I, I walked, ten, I walked the, the, the leather right off my, my shoes, man. Uh, but it was just no fun. I'm walking around the neighborhood, looking at houses, and then finally I started getting out and hiking some trails and getting to pretty places, and and that's and that that's how uh, outdoors with Kirk on Rumble was born. Uh, 
years ago and uh and so i it just continues from there and i eventually i because i broke my neck as i get better maybe we'll get some videos uh, of me camping but mainly it's i'm just talking about getting exercise that's what's important so we're going to move on uh well, we got another little tidbit. Uh, Carrie Lake, uh, I tell you what, I really like her. I think she could be, make a good vice president to, uh, uh, to Donald Trump, assuming he wins the nomination. Boy, they are trying to bury him legally, aren't they? <laughs> They're pulling out every stop. Uh, now some crazy woman's trying to sue him for, for a rape of, what, 10 years ago? I don't know. I just It's hard to follow it all because the Democrats come after him you know, every single day with some new allegation. Uh, Russia, 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 uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. I mean, the guy's been, holy moly. But anyway, Carrie Lake, uh, she won her proceeding with the Supreme uh, Court. And according to Robert Barnes on Viva Fry, I was watching them on Rumble yesterday. This is a big deal because this is how you keep third parties out of the system is that you uh, make it, you say signature matching. You know, and they say, well, you know, so to, to, to get a candidate or a libertarian candidate, and I do know about this, to get a libertarian candidate on the ballot, they'll kick out two thirds of the signatures and say, no, they didn't match. They didn't match. And so they've set a bad precedent. And so this is all about signatures matching on all of these mail-in ballots that took place in Arizona. And uh, there were a lot of shenanigans with those signatures. And so if Carrie Lake does actually get to compare these signatures, we could see a... a uh, a new election take place in Arizona, and so I got I've got my fingers crossed, man, because I do think some shenanigans went down in that election, and I would like to see uh, that whole thing take place this time, hopefully in a in a more uh, upright fashion. Let's just say. Uh, so let's get on to uh, Ukraine. If you didn't know, uh, well today, I, well might be midnight. No. Today, today is May 9th, and uh, boy, I got to get onto my Russian television, huh? And so this was uh, Victory Day in, um, in, in Russia, and a lot of people, but what, is, what is Victory Day? I don't even know what that is. Well, they're celebrating the, the, uh, the victory over Nazi Germany uh, for World War II. And uh, we're going to get into to what that means uh, once I get through the other news uh, about the uh, Russia and Ukraine, and then we'll get into... Uh, what victory day is. Um, so what do I think is going to happen? I would, well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't watched the news, but I would, I, I was going to predict that they're going to pronounce that Bakhmut has fallen on victory day. Uh, what better time? Uh, because there was only what, two square kilometers left. And then they hit them with fire bombs and everything else. And, uh, and then of course, you know, we had that Prigozhin video that came out. If, I mean, if you follow on the news, Prigozhin, he's the leader of the Wagner Group, which has been doing all the fighting in Bakhmut. And uh, he came out with this crazy, I mean, I was watching some of it, and I was like, holy moly, the guy. I mean, he. I thought for sure that his, his days, uh, you know, as a commander, I mean, if you can't, he's a civilian, but I thought his days were numbered, and now he, then, then it turned around, and uh, it looks like Wagner's, well, he was going to pull him out to, May 10th, and then, of course, I don't know, you'd, you'd have to, it's just been a crazy situation, but now they're all back in the fight, and he's got all the ammunition that he needs, and the Russian uh, uh, forces have joined, so don't tell me that they don't want a huge announcement that Bakhmut has fallen to celebrate Victory Day, so, and by the way, I, I video I had a while back, I told you that Bakhmut had fallen, and whenever you take over, it'd be like, you know, Taken Washington, D.C., but fights are still taking place elsewhere. And that's what I meant by Bakhmut has fallen. And somebody was like, it hadn't fallen. They're still fighting. Well, yeah, they were still fighting and they've been fighting and they've been fighting since I put that video out. But once you took over the, the defensive positions that were the, the, the main defense, and then once you took over the central, the, the government buildings in the center of the, of the city, and then when you took the, the high rise complexes, Bakhmut had fallen, and I just wanted to be the first to, to tell you that, and of course I was right. <clears throat> it just took a while longer for them to clear out the remnants of the. And of course, Ukraine was still re providing reinforcements, uh, and but and, and then they did try a counteroffensive, but uh, unfortunately that didn't work for them, and I didn't think it would. The Russians just had uh, closed in those pinchers too too far for the for a, a counteroffensive to to be successful. So let's get back to um, the news here on, on Ukraine. Um, so yeah, you know, the drone came in, but 
more speculation now is that the drone was there to just knock the flag off of their Capitol building rather than assassinate uh, Putin. But who knows? Just wanted to throw that out there. That's what I think it was. You know, the other thing is uh, a lot of people don't know, but Russia's nuclear uh, forces, you know, here in the United States, we call it DEFCON 1, but they're on high alert. So every day I'm thankful, and I hope you are too, that I get up and nuclear bombs are not going off. I don't know how much they would nuke uh, Florida. I mean, we do have Cape Canaveral in the space uh, thing here, but I I hope that Russia knows that Florida, we're, we're pretty, well, I mean, I don't know, we're a Republican state. I don't know how many people here, of course, the Republicans in Congress or Lindsey Graham, they're, they're, they want to blow up Russia. So I can understand how they just would have no sympathy for any state, but who knows? Oh yeah, we're pushing North Korea over the limit. Um, there's going to be some huge military exercises that take place on May 25th and June 15th. Uh, and those are live fire exercises. Uh, and they're just uh, sticking it to North Korea. And if you didn't know, uh, North Korea has conducted more missile tests uh, so far this year than in, in history. Uh, and that included an ICBM. I remember when that ICBM was launched. So uh, we can see that tensions between North and South Korea continue. And, uh, and North Korea says that they, they're not going to hesitate to use tactical nukes. That could be the beginning of World War III. Who knows? I mean, this, this thing could kick off in many ways, shapes, and fashions. The bunker story that I reported on, there was a hypersonic missile that hit a uh, bunker in um, western Ukraine. I don't. Now we're getting a lot more conflicting information. One story is that the Ukrainians put this out as propaganda uh, in order to try to get the West to give them uh, more money, more weapons, uh, give, or, or garner sympathy. Uh, another story, um, which I tend to believe, is and when I say story, that there's a lot of uh, people that, that fish around through social media, Telegram, and all of those services. And they're saying that when this, this bunker was blown up, by the way, it was 100 meters. I might have said 400 meters in that video. It's 100 meter, it was 100 meters below ground. And uh, they're saying that all the local people were reporting on a huge explosion. So something happened, according to all of the, I mean, that's, that's kind of where you got to get your news from these days is, you know, Twitter. You know, thank God Elon Musk took that over. Twitter or social media. And, uh, and so I, I tend to believe all of the uh, scuttlebutt that's coming out that there was something that happened. And it was probably this bunker getting blown up. And that was some NATO officers, Ukrainian officers, and probably a lot of people died that day, if it happened. I can't say 100% for sure. Uh, if you didn't know, the border crisis is going to get one hell of a lot worse. <laughs> Holy moly. Was it Title 14 or whatever? It's coming to an end. So the invasion, uh, and it is an invasion coming across uh, of immigrants. Um, the thing that worries me, and I didn't even know this, you know, immigrants know nothing about U.S. history. They know nothing about the Constitution. Hell, the kids coming up today in the United States don't know anything about the Constitution. If you ask, I bet if you went out on the streets of Chicago or New York City and you asked them what 4th of July was all about, they probably wouldn't be able to tell you. They'd just say, oh, it's about fireworks. <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> So uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't even know what in, I mean, maybe they saw the movie Independence Day. I bet some of them they still wouldn't even know uh, how most of them don't know that George Washington was the first president. You ever watch those videos where they go out and they ask people about, you know, this, that and the other. Oh, my God. So we are in trouble. And uh, but that and so that's going to get back. I'm going to tie that back into the Victory Day celebration in Russia. This was huge news. Uh, just in just in time for Victory Day. And you, I bet, I bet this was up on billboards across Russia. Ukraine's intelligence chief pledges to keep killing Russians. Oh my God! You want to talk about the 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 Russian people being incensed? I, if they weren't fired up before, they're fired up now. Of course, the drone hitting the Capitol building that got them fired up. Now we got the intelligence chief. I mean, what is does Ukraine just want to die? That's the way it looks to me. They just want to die. I mean, you know, because Russia ain't stopping until they get to uh, get uh, Zelensky. Uh, by the way, I, I'm, I'm predicting he'll be uh, pulled out, uh, probably sent to Morocco uh, within the next four four months or so, maybe less, probably a lot less. 
from what I'm seeing, because Russia right now, they, you know, if you if you have followed the war, at first they were targeting the electrical grid and they were forcing. I didn't, you know, I didn't understand the strategy. I was going, well, okay, at least that's they're not killing people per se, but. The reason was they were forcing Ukraine to, to expend all of their um, air defense. And, and it was very successful because Russia, I mean, Ukraine couldn't live without its electrical grid, so they had to defend it. And so that just burned off the air defense. And then what was the next uh, target that they started hitting? I can't remember. It, well, I mean, uh, you know, of course, military targets. But uh, now what they've moved on to is the ammo dumps, and they're hitting the ammo dumps, and they've got those new guided bombs that carry look, like a thousand, equivalent of a thousand or a thousand five hundred pounds of TNT. I mean, the, the, when they hit the ground, and they're very accurate from what I understand, because now they're able to launch from their planes. So I just don't see how Ukraine's going to, I mean, you say that this uh, they've got this offensive coming. How are they going to conduct an offensive without an air force or air cover? And, and no ammo, because if Russia is truly blowing up all these ammo dumps, I, I, it just seems common sense to me that I, I'm going to predict that I, I, don't, I don't think there is going to be an offensive. I really don't. I just don't see how it's, and if they do, it's just, it's, it's going to be a catastrophe. To a lot of Ukrainians are going to die needlessly, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so let's get to uh, Victory Day. So I want to put this in perspective. Um, back in World War II, you have to understand the, the magnitude of the fight that took place between uh, Russia and uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, 26 plus million Russians died uh, fighting Nazi Germany. Okay. And uh, to, to compare that to our losses here in the United States, we lost 440,000. So we don't even celebrate Victory Day here in the United States. Because think about it. We have Memorial Day and we have Labor Day. Well, I mean, Memorial Day really is more or less the, the celebration of, of, of of all the wars, but we don't have a victory day here. But I guarantee if we'd lost 25 million people, 26 plus, excuse me, 26 plus million people, that we would have a huge victory day um, celebration here in the United States. And, and they Russians take it very seriously. Uh, they make sure that all their people are educated on uh, World War II, the importance of uh, victory day. Uh, they honor the, all of the fallen, including... Uh, some some amazing things that I found out about. Uh, before I get into the Victory Day itself, let's just talk two things. Uh, this isn't an advertisement. I wish I could do a paid advertisement, but this Lomi.com, I saw this on one of the videos, and they've got this, because uh, I'm into the gardening thing. You saw the video on my garden. And, uh, and, and this, if you've got a bunch of scraps, I just don't have enough. You might want to just give that a look. The other piece of news that... I thought was very interesting uh, was um, RFK, you know, Jr. He's he's running in the against Biden uh, in the for the Democrat nomination. He came out and flat out said this past weekend that the CIA killed his uncle and father. I mean, that is a bold statement. You know, we all know the conspiracy theories, and I I believe him. I mean, I do I do think the CIA did it, but I mean. You know, I, I maybe he's got some evidence. Uh, you know, his family, you got to remember his dad was president and uh, they were big in politics for many years. Uh, so maybe he's got the smoking gun. Who knows? But let's talk about Victory Day. So the first Victory Day was in 1945. And uh, the first contingent to bring up the, the parade in Moscow was the Ukrainian Armed Forces, led by Pavel Shanichkin, the dean of one of the departments. And he was representing the 11,000 uh, Ukrainian uh, officers that uh, fought side by side with the USSR against Nazi Germany. 14 of which of those Ukrainian officers are immoral, immortalized in the uh, Russian I want to say that they're immortalized in Moscow, and I'm not sure where, probably in a museum or a, a, or a memorial um, somewhere. Then you've got, they were followed by, next came the soldiers of the Polish Armed Forces. 
Uh, they they actually fought the Nazis uh, in in the USSR uh, side by side with the Russians, and then they helped the uh, the USSR take Berlin, and uh, and they of course were the next in line to march in the Victory Day Parade in Moscow. Next came the military personnel, the British Army's elite Welsh regiment, who serve as guards of the Buckingham Palace in London. They were all in their the big top hat and the uniform, probably. I mean, even in Moscow, I bet it was pretty hot. But uh, I guess it is May, May 9th, so probably not too uh, there. So then next on Ridge Square were the soldiers and officers of the United States of America's military. They were followed by the armed forces of France. They, those military personnel were of the Consolidated Division of the Glorious Aviation Fighter Squadron in France. So there you go. That's it for watching the world burn, watching the world burn May 8th. Good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.